Numbers chapter 13 first. We start uh, lesson one of the book of Joshua tonight. <clears throat> we uh, just finished the book of Nehemiah after many months, and that was 13 chapters, <clears throat> and this has 24 chapters. Who knows uh, what Joshua 24, 15 says? We all know it, if you can remember. Yes, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But the book of Nehemiah, we were studying that because it's a book of rebuilding and getting back on track. And of course, for the year of COVID, uh, attacks and we're not out of the woods by any means as they say as long as COVID is on the earth and it's a, a national international problem you can never say that we are completely safe in America because of international travel you never know who's bringing the newest version of it but over in uh, Numbers chapter 13 now let's look over there at uh, 13th chapter, the 12 spies. Remember that uh, 12 men, 12 spies were sent to Canaan land, right? And uh, to spy it out. And one of them was named Joshua. So let's stand and read, uh, starting with pick up where the life of Joshua came from as uh, chapter 13 of Numbers. Let's stand and read a couple verses here. 13.1 of Numbers concerning the life of Joshua. <clears throat> the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers shall he send a man, every one a ruler among them. Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent from the wilderness of Paran, although all those men were heads of the children of Israel. Now we pick up with Caleb uh, in verse 6, but in verse number 8 we, we see Joshua here. Verse 8. And of the tribe of Ephraim, how do you say it here? Oshea, or Oshea. And sometimes you might pick that up in the New Testament as a quote, uh, but it is Joshua, the son of Nun. And so that's where you, you pick that up at. In verse 8, we've covered that, the 12 spies. And uh, let's have a prayer. Lord, we're asking now to guide us into the introduction of this. And may we grow in the Lord through Bible study, not just storytelling, but searching the scriptures, comparing scripture with scripture, finding out what is the will of God for us. And even thousands of years later, here we are needing help from God himself. So we may, may we see folks even saved through what we do here tonight in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. So we'd like to call this uh, sermon tonight, Let's Get Going, because that's what Joshua is about. It's not rebuilding something or holding their own. It's about moving forward. And that's what we need to do tonight. I watched a news clip, Calgary, Canada, a pastor who grew up as a little boy in communist Poland under communism, they had five or six policemen from Canada go to his church to stop them from worshiping because they made it against the law to meet publicly. And rather than caving into them, he preached them out the door. He saw them as the beginnings of communism that he, his family escaped, and he wasn't about to put up with it. And they interviewed him and said, we cannot let this happen again. My family's not going through this again. And so he's, they're moving forward up there, but the government's trying to hold them back for 
so-called moral safety sake, you know, but it stops the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ is what it does. And they're every bit as healthy up there as we are down here. We can't stop just because somebody says stop. Right. We must challenge that because Amen. we're losing our freedoms. Right. And so this book is about moving forward. No matter what's in your way, continuing to move forward to the promised land and claiming all the promises that God has for not being arrogant, but being very confident, as the Bible teaches us. We're to be confident people, not arrogant people. Now, let's get going with title this. Look at uh, 13 verse 18. And let's see some things here. <clears throat> And it says here, and God tells him to go and spy the land out. And so we know the story, if you see these 12 men, 12 spies, 12 men went to spy in Canaan. 10 were bad and 2 were good. And they say the 10 were bad because they brought back a negative report. So God says, go see the land in verse 18. And... <clears throat> Now get the instructions here. What it is, see what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. And what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. And the land, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And he wants them to bring back a sample of that with the giant grapes that they found. And so jump over to uh, verse 27. So they come back with the report. Now this, this is, we better learn this, okay? You, you can really have big trouble if you, if you don't do what God says. He told them to go and see. What did he tell them to do? Go and see. Go and see. 27, they come back and uh, they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it floweth with, surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it. This big cluster of grapes, giant grapes. Now, what's the next word in 28? Okay, now, they're adding to the Word of God. They are giving their opinion of what God, uh, what Moses and God's people ought to do. They were not ordered to do that. Nevertheless, which means, uh, but we think. You see, that's what I say. I'm always saying, don't ever let our opinion be equal to Scripture. Right. Because that is an affront to God. Nevertheless, the people be strong. The reasons why we ought not mess with it. People be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. Not just great, very great. And moreover, moreover, I mean their exaggerations are going, driving them crazy here. We saw the children of Anak or the giants there. And he goes on and on and on and beats this thing into the ground. So God wanted a report, and they bring back the report, but they add the nevertheless. We don't think we ought to risk this. And so <clears throat> the word nevertheless became their death sentence. And people died over this evil report because they turned people to the committee of 10. Now it was 12 individuals from a tribe and they somehow, the jury got together and rigged the, uh, the, the verdict, as it were, or the election. And so we had Joshua and Caleb says, we're not following that crowd. Uh, we, we see that God can take this and we can have this. And 12 were, 10 were bad and, and 12 were, uh, 10 were, two were good, right? 10 were bad and two were good. How many sang that song in Sunday school before? How many have never sung it? You don't know? 
Twelve men went to spy in Canaan, ten were bad and two were good. What do you think they saw in Canaan? Ten were bad and two were good. Some saw giants big and strong, some saw grapes on clusters long. Some saw God was in it all, ten were bad and two were good. That's the signals, right? Now, how many members are singing that? Raise your hand if you've ever sung that. Amen. Well, now we're going to sing it. All right, here we go. Kids, do you know that song? All right. It's, <clears throat> uh, Twelve men went to spy in Canaan. Twelve men went to spy in Canaan. Ten were bad and two were good. What do you think they saw in Canaan? Ten were bad and two were good. Some saw giants big and strong. Some saw grapes on clusters long. Some saw goggles in and all. Ten were bad and two were good. That's the story we just covered here. All right, so we see that the nevertheless, the Bible tells us never add to the word of God and never take away from the word of God. Amen. And so this is where Joshua comes in. 39 years later, go to chapter one of Joshua. 39 years later, we see he is the man in charge uh, you'll find, studying those other passages, that he questioned things uh, early on in chapter 12, I think it was, as uh, Joshua asked Moses about the decisions he was going to make. And so he ended up being the uh, general, I guess you'd call him. He was right under Moses as the commander. And now he is the leader of Israel in the book of Joshua, page 259. Uh -huh. so, so now Joshua's in charge. We're going to study verse 1 to 11 here for the next few minutes. Now, we read along. First, we see the people under Joshua's leadership. The Bible says there's the people under Joshua's leadership now. In verse 1 and 2, Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass... But the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister. So he, uh, he was his, his right-hand man. He was, a, some wrote and say he is the prime minister. You know, if you get a prime cut of beef, you know, that's as good as it gets. And so he's considered here as the prime minister of Israel under Moses. Now he is in charge. Verse 2 says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this who? All this people. Okay, so we see the people under Joshua. Under the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. So we see the people under Joshua's leadership. Look at verse 5 and 6 to go with that. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. So here we have, first of all, out of five things we have, the people under the leadership of Joshua, it's good that they know who they're dealing with. They've seen him in action. They've seen him in war. They, they really trust this leader. He, he came up through the ranks as just a young person, and now he's uh, of, of some age. I would imagine because Caleb, he was like 85 years old and still wanted to take the mountain. Isn't that, am I right on that? Yeah, give me this mountain. That's why we have the songs about that. I want that mountain, the life of Caleb. <clears throat> so, secondly, we have verse 3 and 4, the places under Joshua's leadership. Not only the people there, but also we see the places under Joshua's leadership. Pick up on verse 3 and verse 4. Every, what? Place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, now, <clears throat> do we earn salvation? No, it's given to us. Everything really 
we don't, we don't really tap into grace like we ought to, even though our church is called that, Grace Bible Baptist Church. <clears throat> but God wants to give his children. He wants to give a, guys, I want to give this land to you, the place, I want to give it to you. But you know, there's people that you've tried to see saved, but they would rather earn it themselves because of their pride. Yeah. And they're going to go to hell trying to earn something that God wants to give them. Yeah. And regret that for eternity? We can't even handle that. And guess what? In hell, they can't handle it either, but they're going to. All of eternity, they'll think. It was just a gift. It was just something God wanted. To, God wanted to show me love, and I wouldn't let him. Because I'm God. That's what the devil told Eve. You shall be as gods, didn't she? Didn't he tell him that? Well, here it says, I want to give you some land. I'm giving unto you, as I said unto Moses. And here's the places from the wilderness, this Lebanon. I think that's incredible. We have a land called Lebanon today. And this was written here 1,500 years, 3,500 years old. A land is still called Lebanon. Isn't that something? Ethiopia, all the Bible names are they're ancient places. And uh, the wilderness, this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and that's in Iraq, of course, <clears throat> the land of Nineveh and Babylon, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, which is what? What is the great sea? Mediterranean. The Mediterranean. And uh, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. As far as you can see down the coastline, that's going to be your perimeters, your boundaries, your circum... Uh, <clears throat> what do you call that? Circumference. So we have the places, we have the people that are under Joshua's leadership that God gave him. Now, verse 7 to 9, thirdly, we see the prosperity under Joshua's leadership. There's a key word here. It's conditional, prosperity. How many like to prosper? Not just money, but in achievements and accomplishments. And, and you look back and you can see where you've been and things are better. That always leave things better than you found them, right? But uh, we, we, you know, there's some people that just, they destroy everything along the way. They, don't, they, they never prosper. They're just litter bugs. Everything in their lives is just litter to be thrown away. They waste, waste what God gives them. But it says in verse number uh, seven to nine, because we did five and six. So we see the prosperity rule here. Only be thou strong and very, very, courageous. He adds on these adjectives and adverbs here. Very courageous. Why? That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Without the word nevertheless. All the law which Moses my servant commanded, commanded thee. Turn not from it. What is it? God's commandments. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, stay right down the middle of the road, be gun barrel straight, stay out of the right wing ditch, stay out of the left wing ditch. Christians are not supposed to be ditch people. They should be down straight down the middle of the road. Yeah. Straight shooter, we call them, right? And that what we normally say, that person's straight. They try to make fun of us because we're straight. Yeah. That's right. Well, we don't have the heartache that, that, that people live in the ditches. We don't have the heartache they have. It, don't, it doesn't matter if you wreck a car in the right ditch or the left car. It's the same damage. It doesn't matter if you're a super conservative or a, a super center, a liberal left. It doesn't matter. It says stay out of those ditches. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest what? Thou mayest what? Prosper. How many know if you, drive, if you fall into a ditch, fall, can't get out, or you wreck a car or a motorcycle, you're going to have to have some help to get out of there. How many know that? Yeah, and guess what? you got to pay them to get you out. There goes your prosperity right there. You're in the hole twice. Yeah. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Praise the Lord. Verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, 
It means we need to memorize it, do we not? Amen. So it comes out of our mouth. But thou shalt meditate, be in our heart and our brain, right? Memorization and meditation. Meditate therein day and night. Why? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, for then, for then, memorization, meditation, for then thou shalt make thy way, what? Prosper. You make your way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Success is not accumulation. Success is always accomplishment. Jesus accumulated nothing, but he accomplished everything in the supernatural world. Then he goes on here in verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, confused. For the Lord, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Amen. So prosperity is under Joshua's leadership. Quickly go to Psalm 19, talking about the power of the word of God in our life. Psalm 19 and the power of the law, the power of the commandment, the power of the precepts. And we see here in Psalm 19, verse 7, a great passage uh, that reinforces what we read in Joshua. Amen. But 19, verse 7, it says here, the law of the Lord is what? Perfect. What does it do? Converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple, the statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant, what? Warned. 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 Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them is what? There is reward. No, it's great reward. It doesn't say reward. It says great reward. So if we get this thing down to stay in the middle, stay out of the ditch, and, and meditate and memorize and speak God's word, Great, great things will come our way. Let's sing these verses together here. How many know the tune to this? All right. <clears throat> the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey. <coughs> uh, the chorus is verse 10, verse 8 here. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes, verse 10. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Number nine. The fear of the Lord is clean <clears throat> forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Go back to Joshua. Let's keep on moving here. So the people under Joshua's leadership, the places under Joshua's leadership, the prosperity under Joshua's leadership, <clears throat> but it tells them that only if you do this, that's what he said, you got to get this down, only if you do this, we picked up there in verse 7 to 9. Verse says, only be strong and very courageous. 
Now, we have uh, in number four, look at verse 10 and 11a. 10 and 11a. The preparation under Joshua's leadership. He says, you get ready for this. It's coming. We're going to do it. So we pick up in verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, <clears throat> Pass through the host and command the people, saying, What? Prepare. Prepare your victuals, food, stuff to move on. For within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess. So the preparation is what we're looking at here from 10 to 11a. And so he says, we're going to do this. Uh, we're not going to, we know what God showed us back there when we were just young men, Caleb and me, and God blessed that. He wants us to go in there. We're going in there 39 years later, by the way. Remember 40 years in the wilderness? You count that, you adding all that up. And so here we we're going to do this. Now we should be people of, uh, the Bible doesn't teach whatever will be, will be. It doesn't teach that. That's right. The Bible teaches us to prepare for eternity. Amen. We should be preparing for tomorrow. Right. And preparing for the weekend coming. Amen. You know, it's, it's coming. And so Jesus said, if you're going to go to war, you better prepare for it. If you're going to build a tower, you better prepare for it. You got to prepare. Without preparation, there will not be any possession. And that brings us to our last thought here. So we have the people, the places, with the prosperity under Joshua, the preparation under Joshua. He's told the leaders, get them ready, tell them what we're doing. We're moving forward. We're not hanging back any longer. We've been, in, been too long in the sand, too long eating manna food. We, we need to get over where they're. The grapes of Eskel are. Now, we see the possessions under Joshua's leadership. The last half of verse 11, 11b, we read it, but we really want to, it says, prepare you victuals. And then there's two dots there, semicolon, I believe it is. And then it says, for within three days, you shall pass over this Jordan to go what? To go what? To go what? Go in to possess the land. We're going to do it. Nothing's going to stop us. God says do it. We're going to do it. Possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. So twice we see here God says I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. Uh, take it. Take it. Go. Move on. Possess it. So possessions under Joshua's leadership. Now we'll pick up next time in verse 12 and uh, about stipulations as the Reubenites and the different tribes start to assemble to go over and conquer the land. <clears throat> but let me close with uh, a few words here in conclusion. Get this. God will do the work. God will do the work. Yeah. Only if we do the preparation for his work. He doesn't want us to do the work. He wants us to do the preparation for the work. He's going to do the work. Jesus said in John 15, verse 5, without, say it with me, without me, ye can do nothing. He doesn't want us to get in his way. He just wants us to help prepare. What does John the Baptist come to do? He didn't come to be the Messiah. He came to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. Amen. That's all he wants us to do. Just do what he says to do. And the, the master will come back and he'll do the work. He'll do, put the finishing touches on the piece of art that he's, he's painting with us. God will do the work only if we do the preparing for his work when he shows up. Because preparing, I don't know if you've ever thought of this, but preparing means we believe God will do what God says he will do. Not preparing is doubting what God says he's going to do. Remember the, the talents in, in the Bible there? Some one, some two, one five. And remember, they came back to take an account. 
and they found the one guy, he, he, he just hid his. He didn't, he didn't try to do any work for the master at all. He was totally rebuked for that. He didn't respect what his master taught him or, or gave him to put in his stewardship. So preparing means we believe God will do what God says he will do. Turn quickly and lastly to 2 Timothy 2.21. 2 Timothy 2.21. So we don't have to do everything perfectly, but we need to always be people of preparation. Yeah. How many think Jesus is coming back? Yeah. Well, are we just thinking or are we preparing for it? Amen. You know, we can think ourselves into sin. Yeah, that's our opinion, isn't it? Nevertheless, it brings judgment. So 2 Timothy 2.21 is one verse we want to see. Now it says here, if a man per therefore purge himself from these, and that means the verses before that, cleaning his life up, getting ready to be used of the Lord. If he does this, if a man therefore purge himself from these, these hindrances of these sins, then it says, comma, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and fit or meet for the master's use and what else? Ah, there it is. And prepared unto every good work. So we're to be people of preparation. So we may also be the people of possession and prosperity and power and everything God has for us. Is anything God can't do? God can do anything, but he's told us to prepare because it shows we believe he can do that. So we, we, we should be punctual, we should be honest, we should be, is it hard right to say we should be Christ-like? Yeah. Shouldn't that be our goal, really? Yeah. Not to get a Sunday school pen for perfect attendance or some stupid thing like that. Well, there's people that are watching this and may, you know, they may, there's some people look like a, a, a war veteran. You know, they got all these Sunday school pens and out of their denomination. But uh, it means nothing. Preparing the heart in the morning, get our Bibles, go to talk to the Lord, wake up in the middle of the night, well, just start praying for somebody. Or, or if you don't want to pray, you get the Bible and turn the book of First and Second Chronicles. You go back to sleep right away. <laughs> it's God's sleepyhead book. Amen. So, Lord, we thank you for this book of Joshua as it starts off in, with an exciting journey. We've read it before. We know how it goes, but we want to see it again so that we become people like these people that and go to places like they went to places and have the prosperity that they had and also possess the land that you want, want us to conquer in our personal lives. So we ask you now to bless the invitation, strengthen us and give us the power of the Holy Spirit now to go out and prepare and do our job. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. amen. Let's stand and turn to page number 291. 291. Do you have a need tonight? Remember the title is Let's Get Going. Let's Get Going. Enough of this stopping. Hosea of Nun, Joshua, son of Nun.